It is time now for the Waste Report, and today we are talking, well, not about the U.S. debt ceiling and whether that should be raised, because frankly, we need a number of shows to talk about that issue uh, with our next guest. No, we're talking about foreign inmates in Canadian prisons, the cost to taxpayers as well, the goings-on over at our friends uh, at the state broadcaster from Winnipeg, the Prairie Director of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. Colin Craig joins us. Hello there. Nice to see you and happy stampeding. Hi, Krista. Thanks for having me. You bet. Okay, uh, so as we mentioned a moment ago, we're talking about federal inmates, foreign federal inmates, I should say, and the costs to Canadian taxpayers. What do we know about this? Well, right now, it, it costs Canadian taxpayers about $63 million a year to, uh, for the incarceration costs of those that aren't citizens but are sitting in our federal prisons right now. $63 million a year. I believe we have a graphic, if it is prepared, if we can put it up, because you have also um, taken the time to break down uh, what the cost is, the average cost per inmate. Is that right? Yeah, well, actually, the number comes from the federal government. It's ah. uh, just under $114,000 a year every time uh, someone has to go and sit in a federal jail for a year. It's a huge cost. Okay, so that number is provided by Corrections Canada, I assume. Uh, yep. But in terms of the total cost of foreign inmates, is that, just so that we're clear and transparent with our friends at home, that is a number that the Canadian Taxpayers Federation has determined, that 63 million? Yes, that's the number that we've calculated based on two numbers from the federal government. The number that they provided in terms of how much it costs for the average inmate, as well as the number that they provided in terms of the number of people in federal jails that aren't Canadian citizens. And how many of those are there? Well, as of September of uh, last year, there was about 554 uh, non-citizens nationwide that were in uh, federal federal prisons. Right. So the math is pretty simple. You just multiply 554 uh, times uh, 114,000 114, or so. That's how you arrived at 63 million. So I just want to get that out of the way. Now, who are the people who comprise uh, foreign inmates? Are they people who are here legitimately or illegitimately or both? What do we know about that? Well, for all kinds of reasons. I mean, if you've snuck into Canada and uh, you're a non-citizen and you get thrown into one of our jails, then you're going to be in that count. Uh, the same way that if, you, know, you could be someone who's here just for a vacation and you commit a crime. Obviously a serious one if you're going to a federal prison. Um, I mean, you'd be in that count too. So it's a variety of ways that people, I guess, are getting into that uh, exclusive club, so to speak. But uh, it's a pretty high number for taxpayers to have to uh, pick up the tab for these expenses each year. It sure is, and I have no doubt that our very uh, hard-working friends at home who are watching this segment are saying, why the heck am I paying for this? And it's certainly a fair question. Uh, but let me put this to you. I mean, we do, and I know you'll agree, Colin, live in the greatest country in the world. Uh, doesn't that mean that we are bound to attract uh, people who have untoward intentions, that we are bound uh, to pay for the incarceration of people uh, who are coming to this country, whether it be illegally or illegitimately or whatever, a few bad apples is the expression that comes to mind. I mean, is there any way around this? Well, I, I think uh, that if we do have bad apples that show up in Canada and they're not uh, Canadian citizens and they have to serve jail for committing crimes, uh, the goal should be to get them to serve that time back home because in a lot of cases it's probably going to be cheaper uh, than uh, keeping the person in a Canadian jail because Canadian jails are expensive to run. So, um, yeah, I mean, you're, you're going to have these bad apples. I don't think we'll, we'll ever get that number down to zero. The key is to uh, try and reduce it and get those costs off of Canadian taxpayers' backs. That's something that we raised with uh, the federal government, uh, as well as Winnipeg Sun columnist Tom Broadbeck raised the issue as well. And, and thumbs up to the feds, they're trying to do something about it. They've what exactly are they trying to do about it, Colin? Well, they've, they've said they're going to bring in legislation uh, probably sometime this fall that's going to make it easier for them to uh, send these people back to whatever country they come from. And what's incredible right now is that if you're a foreign or a non-citizen and you commit a serious crime and you go to a federal prison and the feds somehow can arrange to send you back to that country, you can veto it, which is just ridiculous. So you could be, a, you know, like I said, a non-citizen and say, well, I don't want to go back to my home country because the jail conditions there are awful and, and just simply say no. So the feds are going to try and change that to remove that veto power that prisoners have. Uh, they're also going to try and make it easier to just deport people once they are out of Canadian jails. Uh, so we think that that's a good step. I mean, if you're going to come to Canada, we do have one of the, the greatest countries in the world. You darn well better uh, abide by our laws once you're here. 
Uh, many of us couldn't agree with you more here at the Sun News Network, and I know many of our friends at home uh, would certainly agree with that sentiment. Uh, okay, before I let you go, I've got to bring up uh, one of our favorite hobby horses. You know it as the state broadcaster. That's what I know it as, too, now. Um, so here's the latest. Uh, first of all, the information commissioner is yet again looking into the practices of disclosure when it comes to the state broadcaster and the CBC and how it goes about spending taxpayers' money. Um, so the information commissioner, I gather, uh, has discovered uh, that Sylvain La France, who is a vice president responsible for French language services over at Radio Canada and CBC, uh, went on a two-month course uh, to Harvard. Uh, guess who paid for that? None other than the taxpayers, of course. And the amount, we learn, uh, is in excess of $52,000. Again, this is something that's been highlighted uh, by the information uh, commissioner as she continues to uh, investigate and to delve into uh, the lack of transparency on the part of the state broadcaster um, and its adherence to uh, freedom of information and access to information uh, laws in this country um, whereby Canadians are entitled to find out and learn about the ways that, that the CBC is spending uh, taxpayers money. So again, one way that we've discovered uh, in recent hours is that a vice president has been sent on a course uh, to Harvard and it cost taxpayers $52,000. Why the heck are taxpayers paying for this, Colin? Well, that's, that's a good question. I mean, you know, if you think about it, a lot, a lot of businesses will spend a bit of money on training to uh, send, you know, employees to different courses and that, right? I mean, if this was 1000 or $2,000, and if the CBC required that individual to stay for a certain number of time afterwards, then I, I think most people would get that, right? But $52,000, I mean, that's way more than what the average Canadian earns each year. So that's a very difficult number to swallow. It sounds almost like someone just wanted to go to Harvard and stick taxpayers with the bill for it. Well, if you think that's difficult to swallow, uh, try this one on. That's the only one that we know about, Colin. And that's the only one that our friends at home know about in terms of uh, staffers or executives at the CBC who have been sent on these kinds of courses. The reason why we know about it is because of uh, the information commissioner. Uh, but do not be surprised uh, if there are other examples of this sort of thing. And as I have said on this program and on this network before, certainly as a former employee of the state broadcaster, uh, if the Auditor General were to ever go into the CBC and conduct an audit, uh, heads would roll, to say the least, there would be revolt in the streets. <laughs> well, that, you, you've just got to take exactly my word for it. Wanna, What's that? It's not exactly what you want to hear, but... Uh, no, I know. Yeah, no, I mean, you're, you're bang on. I mean, uh, you know, the CBC is receiving over a billion dollars each year in public funds. Uh, they need to be transparent about how those dollars are being spent. And, you know, no one wants to hear that there's going to be more examples like this. But, uh, I mean, you work there if you're saying that heads would roll, then, you know, I'm sure there's probably other cases there. Heads would roll, eyeballs would roll, the tops of people's heads would blow off if the Auditor General went in there and conducted an audit. I'm I assure you of that and all of our friends at home, but we'll have to wait and see if that day ever arrives. Uh, in the meantime, we turn to you for your insights and expertise as always. He is Colin Craig and he is uh, one of the directors at the Canadian Taxpayers Federation and this is, of course, The Waste Report. Thanks, Colin. Thanks, Krista.